12 to 15 working days is what the internet company told us at the beginning of January. Now we're being told that we'll be connected on February 22nd. That's fine, that's not a problem, that's not a problem at all. I mean, it's not like 50% of our household income comes from the internet, we don't need it. We can survive. And what do they expect me to do for two months where I have no internet connection, no entertainment, no work to do? I mean, I could unpack my house like a normal functioning responsible adult. I should probably do that, shouldn't I? Oh baby, I love your madness. It's so incredibly beautiful. Oh, you shine like gold, so selfless to all. And while I can anymore, so. So cute. The small ones and medium ones and big ones and the small ones are s look look at look look. He's small and a tall boy. It's like I have my own little army of jars. I have a jarmy. All my jars match and I'm so happy. I can't begin to explain the sheer happiness that is flowing through me right now at the concept of having matching jars. Love it so much. Start for later. Who wants rice? One of you is getting rice. <laughs> I just cleaned this this morning. There is. Uh, was there a wedding in here? You have had all morning to poop. Why are you pooping now? Oh, oh, hello. Hi there. You heard the litter tray too, huh? Come to see if there's a snack for you in there, huh? Huh? Oh, your breath. Looking like a scruff. Oh, you're too short. Oh, baby, same. The world wasn't made for us. Oh. We tried to make a start on the attic this week and, and we did make a start on it. We very successfully rolled out not one, but two rugs. Wow, shocking. That's not a secret space. Oh, that was a mistake. Oh, this was a mistake. And we even put the shelf system back together and placed our Xboxes on it. Which is also an achievement. Right. <laughs> Ow! Oh. Oh. Someone's gonna get hurt. You! Yeah! <laughs> Finally! Oh my god, you're heavy! Three. And then after that, we had like a million other things to do and we were very overwhelmed by this concept. So we just took a nap on the carpets because we're literally toddlers. <laughs> then after our nap, we realized that things were still overwhelming. So we just left the attic and didn't go back to it. I can't even remember what it looks like up there. I am gonna have to go check at some point. We are the worst possible pairing of human beings if you want anything to be completed ever. We did get a call from the internet folk a few days ago, basically saying, hey, we can't find your house. Um, this is a bit of a problem. 
but we'll call you back if we do. I can find my house on Google Maps. How can you, an internet company, not find my house? Google it. <laughs> oh, and also, one more thing. We're in a lockdown. We've, we've been in a lockdown since the 10th of January. It's even harder to get things done. And we've also gone back to the text message system that we had in the last lockdown, which I know other countries don't have this, so I'd like to explain it because apparently, I explained this before and you think it's really weird, uh, but basically you have to text the government when you want to go out. They've got a special text message number set up and you send them a little text and you're just like, hey babe, how you been? I need to go out. I know I can only go out twice today, but you know, if this could be one of my times, that'd be great. Here's my reasoning for it. It's very important. I need bread. Here is my ID number and here is my address. Do with that what you will. And then you wait half a second and you get a text message back that basically says, fine. Do what you want. And then you have to take your little permission slip and your identification and you get a maximum of three hours to complete whatever essential task it is that you need to do. You don't actually have to text them saying like the specifics of what you want to do. They've set out eight different reasons, same as last time. They set out eight different reasons uh, that are covered by this text message system and you text them the numbers one to eight depending on what reason it is you need to go out. You send them the reason, you send them your ID, you take your ID with them, and then if the police do stop you, you just have to show them your permission slip and they match your ID number up on that permission slip to your actual ID. And then they're just like, yeah, you've got permission, carry on. Our dear Squishy is no more. He was thrown, thrown from a shelf, just shattered on the ground where he has lain for many hours, many, many hours. Oh, Squishy, my dear Squishy, you poor thing. And now you are without a home. This is far too real for me right now. All that remains of your home, of your terrible, abusive fish home. Oh, Squishy, oh. I need to get you a new ball. What did they do? What did they do to your home? Evil cats, water everywhere. Oh, it's leaving his family as a murderer. Good news today. We finally have our heating working. We've been living for the last three weeks in the coldest month of the year with no heating in this house. I have been dying. On the flip side though, because the universe has to balance itself out apparently, we also found a switch in our home that if you press it, it's supposed to start the extractor fan above the oven. Um, but instead, it trips all the electricity in the house. And it blew out a light that used to be here. That isn't there anymore. It's here it is. This was not supposed to happen. We had an electrician come round a few days after we moved in to sort out a, a plug socket that was blown from the last tenant because apparently someone had done some dodgy wiring and there was too much electricity going into it and it just... He replaced the plug socket on the first day and we've been waiting three weeks for him to come back and then fix the actual fuse issue with it, which is what he was doing today. And then we mentioned the, the switch that turns everything off and he took a look at that and it turns out um, the extractor fan that's in here isn't supposed to be in here. We actually talked to our landlady about it. She had no idea there was an extractor fan, which it also explains the shoddy, shoddy carpentry that went into putting the extractor fan in because we that I, 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 it's bad. So the extractor fan is not part of the original build and the wiring to the extractor fan is not the correct wiring. Apparently they've just grabbed a light wire out of the wall, which is not thick enough to send enough power through, which is what was causing the switch to blow the entire house and destroy a light. And now that needs fixing. Onwards and upwards. Woo! I need to over my fan light. My non-decapitation fan, my regular fan. Lizzie, got something for you? Yeah. Oh, not for you too. Yeah, you love catnip, don't you? Oh, oh, you want this one? Oh, oh yes. <laughs> know which sociopath decided that this would be the oven they installed in this house but I would like to have words with them I don't know how it works you turn it on the clock flashes not numbers oh no 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 just flashes 
just flashes. The oven in our apartment was very easy to work. You turned it on, you turned that dial around, you set the heat, and then you press the timer button, and it turned on. That is clearly not what's happening with this one. That's fine, it's a different model. Not a problem, right? I just have to click a different button, but I don't know what any of the buttons do, because the, the light, it doesn't say anything. It's supposed to say something, but it doesn't. It just flashes and there's no instructions and I have no internet, which means I can't Google how it works. So anytime I feel like having an overpriced frozen pizza, I've got to treat this thing like it's a PlayStation 1 and I'm trying to get the cheat codes in. I don't even know what combination I just did. But it... We're just gonna... Are you gonna stay on now? Is that it? You're gonna scream at me again. I'll give you a second to decide. <sighs> you! Turn it off. And back on again. Nope. Nah. Nah. The lights aren't even changing. It's not like anything... Nothing's different. Well, I've clearly figured out how to put the timer on. I don't know what I did to do that. And I certainly couldn't intentionally replicate it. But I figured that out. I don't want the timer. I just want you to be on and to be on. And it, there's no light in here. So I can't see what's going on. The bulb's gone. I don't like this oven. We're not allowed to replace you because you function. I would like to replace you because I disagree. I'm going to place my pizza inside you. You are going to cook it. And then we're gonna part ways. We're never gonna talk again, okay? If you could manage that, you would be achieving the absolute bare minimum. Okay. Do you know how close I am to just eating you? I am not eating very healthily at the minute. I am barely still surviving. And I just want my pizza. <laughs> Please. <laughs> Look, it's defrosted in the time it's taken you to do whatever it is you're currently doing. This is his favorite activity right now. Sticking his head out through the earthquake gap and just watching people. Like the creepy neighbor he is. See anything interesting? <laughs> so among everything else that's been going on this month, um, we unfortunately did have some sad news, which I've already talked about over on Instagram uh, when it happened, but I'm aware that some of you guys only follow me here on YouTube and just might not be caught up. But unfortunately, our elderly dwarf hamster, Ammonia, has passed away. We said goodbye to him on January the 8th, I believe it was. And it was a very peaceful passing. He just slipped away in his sleep in the night. Uh, he wasn't sick, he wasn't suffering. He was just an old hamster and it was his time. And we were amazed that he made it as long as he did because you guys know his dodgy genetic background. Both of his parents passed away around a year old from issues relating to their brain. We thought for his entire life that he wasn't going to make it past a year and then he did and it was amazing and then he made it past 18 months which is for hamsters that makes them a senior citizen and that was amazing and he made it through the move which i i was so frightened in those last few days of the move where we were back and forth between the new place and the old place i was so worried that, that that's when i was going to lose him because there was just so much going on and i wasn't able to spend as much time with him and i'm thinking if i lose him now this is going to be really hard but he did make it here and I did get to spend those last few days of his life with him which is very comforting to me. This isn't a hugely emotional situation because this is something we've been expecting for a while. We knew his time was coming and while it is always sad to say goodbye to a member of the family, uh, particularly with small pets where it feels like just saying goodbye all the time because they have such short lifespans, I am so incredibly happy that he got to live as long as he did, because, I mean, he was fighting against genetic odds there, that I was never expecting that to happen. And I know that he had a good life. I know that I give my small pets a good life. He had that great big enclosure to himself. He had a lot of fun, he had a lot of snacks, a lot of food, a lot of everything that he wanted, everything that he needed. And that feels good, 
not only did he get to live a good life, but he got to live a good and long life. And it's kind of hard to be sad about that because, you know, you have to say goodbye to them eventually. This is really the best that you can hope for is that they make it to their senior months and that they had a good life. And that's what he got. Day 44, and we finally own a washing machine. We own this. This is ours. We bought this. How grown up is that? So thank you very much to everybody who watched my videos in December of last year, because that, that, that is the money that we used to buy the washing machine with. So you bought us a washing machine. Thank you. And hopefully, once we get an internet connection and I can start uploading videos again, we should, in the next couple of months, be able to buy our own fridge as well, because we're borrowing this one currently from an absolute savior who lent this to us completely free of charge. I'm not sure what we would have done otherwise, uh, but this is just sort of your standard small fridge with a little, ooh, very frosty freezer section. I need to defrost that. We've been borrowing this one since we moved in, but obviously long term we do need to buy our own fridge. In our apartment, all the appliances came with the apartment, so it had its own washing machine, its own fridge. So we've never had to buy that stuff before, and that stuff's expensive. <laughs> but because I enjoy cooking stuff so much, I really would like to buy a nice fridge. If we're gonna own our own fridge, I would rather spend a little more money and invest in one that I really, really like that's gonna last us a long time. This washing machine is supposed to last us five years. It's got five year warranty, so, you know, that's, that's a good investment. But I would really love to have a nice, sizable, good quality fridge that is gonna last us and isn't like our last fridge going to constantly break down on us because I had to learn to fix fridges because the fridge in our apartment kept breaking down and I just could not be bothered to keep asking the agent to bring a handyman out. So I was just like, I'll just learn to fix it myself. In case you're ever wondering how I learn all the weird little handy things that I know, basically it's through laziness. I can't be bothered to call someone out for it, so I just, figure out how to fix it myself. And then I learn. Laziness benefits me in so many ways and hinders me in so many more. It's been very strange not having a small pet around for so long. It's been over a month. I think it's been about six weeks. And I am very much at the point where I'm ready to bring a new one into the family and I'm very excited about it. I have decided that I will be getting a Syrian this time because I've not had one in a couple of years and I'm, I'm gonna try. <laughs> I'm gonna try and get a short haired one. But you guys know my reputation with that. Every single time I say, I'm gonna get a short-haired Syrian this time, I always come home with a long-haired Syrian because I see them and I can't resist them. The only way that I am actually gonna be able to bring a short-haired Syrian home is if when I go to get a hamster, they only have short-haired. Because if they have a long-haired, I'm gonna pick the long-haired. I am. 
You know I am, I know I am. I can say short-haired now, but... It will probably be a male hamster again, just because I have a preference for male hamsters, and I really don't care what colour it is, because I would rather choose them by their temperament over their colour, so I... I have no expectations for that, that's gonna be a complete surprise to me and to you. I do have a name picked out that I really, really like, and it has nothing to do with science. I've decided we've been through so many changes these last couple of months, our entire world, our entire lives have, have been flipped around. We're in just a completely different place to where we were just two months ago, <laughs> both literally and, and otherwise. And I figured if some things are gonna change, I might as well take this opportunity to change basically everything. <laughs> so. I'm leaving the science theme behind. We, we followed it for a long time, since 2013. I started naming my hamsters and my enclosures after science themes. The elements theme I did really love for naming them, and maybe I will go back to that one day. Um, but right now, I've picked out a name that has nothing to do with the elements, nothing to do with science in general, and it's super cute, and I love it, and I can't wait to give it to someone. The only thing that's delaying the hamster situation right now, and it's a pretty big thing, is that I can't currently get wood to build a new enclosure because we don't have any enclosures. We couldn't bring them with us here because they, they just, they didn't fit. Um, and so I have to build new enclosures. But the places that sell wood don't have any wood at the minute. And I don't know whether that's due to the lockdown or not. We're not still in the full lockdown now. We're in like a half lockdown. All the retail shops have opened back up again, but we still have the text message system. So yeah, I'm not sure, I'm not sure how long that's going to delay things because I, I can't get a hamster without a cage obviously yeah that's kind of annoying so hopefully they'll get wood back in soon and as soon as they do i can build the cage and of course i'm going to film building the cage don't you worry about that i'm looking forward to making that video i'm looking forward to a new project it's just a case of waiting until supplies become available and i have no idea how long that's going to be i really do hope it's soon though because i i'm i miss having a hamster and i am so ready for another one and I'm so ready to have a Syrian again. Oh, and the name's so cute. <laughs> yes. Yes. Thank you. Mm -hmm. <coughs> ah, that was Rodney's tail. I need to go make myself some lunch because it is quarter to four in the afternoon and I am hungry. Oh, you're gonna. You're not a lap dog. <laughs> He's straight up curled up on my lap. Honey, you're not. I know you're not like. You're not a big dog, but you're also not a small dog. <laughs> oh, Lizzie, you've come back. Thanks. I set up the camera in a really nice place where you could see the, the cat in the background and then as soon as I turned it on, she left. I love working with animals. It's just so... so stress-free. <laughs> so fun. Do you see this thing? You see this thing right here? Do you know what that is? Yeah. That is a Wi-Fi router. We are connected to the internet. At last, finally, on the 49th day, we finally have internet connection. I'm so happy. 49 days in internet time, I'm, I'm basically deceased at this point. I've been forgotten about, I don't exist. YouTube's gonna have shadow banned me again. I had just repaired the damage from when I took an intentional break. Anyway. <laughs> I don't know what to do with myself now. I mean, I'm, I've, I've gotta go and uh, upload this video that you're currently watching. I'm literally, this is, this is my whole day today now, is making sure this video goes up. So you can say, hi, this is actually me now. This is current me. I mean, a few hours behind by the time you watch this. But like, hi, I'm, I qualify as still living. So now that you're watching this, I am officially back on YouTube, although I have no hamster and no hamster cage and no idea what I'm gonna do. I'll figure it out, don't you worry. I, I will, I will figure it out. So I hope you enjoyed catching up with what the heck has been going on since I've been gone. Mostly just setting up this place and trying to get it functional. It's semi-functional. The living room is functional, the kitchen is functional. I have decided that I do not like the shade of blue that I painted the kitchen. So I'm gonna be repainting that a different shade of blue. The bedroom is pretty much functional now. The sun's going down, so we're getting terrific lighting for the end of this video. There is still plenty to get done on this house. The attic is still not functional. The goblin shelf is not functional. The office slash rodent room is not functional. I think I'm gonna do that one on camera because, you know, it's relevant to my channel and doesn't require me to have a hamster. So that's helpful. And there's plenty of things that we still need to get the landlord to repair and fix and replace and stuff like that, so. Yeah, it, it, we're, we're a long way from actually living in a fully functional, just, just to be able to live and exist in the house. 
but it's a project that I am actually enjoying and it's keeping me busy. I'm very glad to finally be back online though. Thank you guys for being so incredibly patient because I know in my last video I said I was going to try and keep uploading videos by using other people's Wi-Fi and borrowing laptops and things like that because I have an actual sitting computer that I can't carry with me but then literally a few days after I posted that video the lockdown came in and we'd say goodbye to ammonia at that point as well and we just had so much stuff suddenly come up with the house that we weren't expecting and I realized that trying not only trying to make videos but trying to upload videos while dealing with all of that stuff uh, was going to just be an extra stressor that I didn't need, I, I really didn't need it. So I'm sure you guys can understand and appreciate the position I was in, but I'm back now and uh, ready to get back to normal. So thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to come follow me over on Instagram if you want to see more stuff, behind the scenes stuff, everyday stuff, more of the pets, things like that, particularly with the dogs and the cats. I post a lot of them in my stories. Don't forget to leave a like, leave a comment, all that good stuff, and I will see you guys very soon, hopefully. <laughs> Bye.